What is up guys, TEJ here, and in today's video, we are going to be reviewing Lab Golf's latest putter model, the Link 1. So, let's get right into it. Alright guys, so the Link 1 putter from Lab Golf, obviously their newest variation of their blade models. If you know Lab Golf, they started out with the DF 2.1, then they launched their first blade, the Blad 1, then their second blade, the B.2, recently launched new mallets, the Mez 1 and Mez 1 Max, and finally they have answered the calls for an answer style putter with the Link 1. Now if you don't know who Lab is or what they do, well they are a putter company out of Cresswell, Oregon, specializing in making zero torque putters or lie angle balancing putters as in the name Lab Golf. Now the way most putters work is they have a twisting bias based on their offset, toe hang, and head style, and what you the player needs to do is manipulate the club face with your hands in order to deliver it back to the golf ball square at impact. Now what Lab Golf has done is they've developed a putter with zero bias in twisting or zero torque. So what this putter does and all their putters do is they stay dead square to the arc that they are swung on without any manipulation from your hands. And the way this can be demonstrated is using their revealer. I'll put a video up now. It is essentially a putter holder that allows you to stroke putts without using any manipulation from your hands. And if you look at every other putter on the market, they have some bias in twisting, whether it be open or closed. On the other hand, Lab Golf putters have zero bias in twisting, so without any manipulation, they stay dead square. All that being said, lie-angle balancing is easily one of the most interesting technologies that we've seen in the golf industry over the past few years, and it genuinely works, and that is why we are seeing Lab Golf become so popular, especially on major tours. Now, in terms of players who are using Lab Golf putters, I won't name them all, but some of the bigger names, Adam Scott, Sergio Garcia, Pat Perez, and recently Charles Howell just won on the Live Tour with a Link 1. Now what's so interesting about Link 1 is the fact that it is Lab Golf's first ever dip into the answer style putter game. They've done a couple blades in the past, as I mentioned, but finally this is one that is closer to the modern blade we see on the market nowadays. And that's one of the reasons I wanted to review this putter for you guys, because I think a lot of people like Lab Golf's technology and what they're doing, but just can't quite get over the fact that some of their putters are a little bit different looking, but finally we have something that is a little bit more standard. Now in terms of a retail price for Link 1, it is $500. And 59 US dollars, which is quite expensive, but they do offer some pretty impressive customization options, including eight different alignment aids. You have different shaft options and grip options as well. Additionally, Lab Golf will actually fit you remotely for your putter for free, which is a really cool thing that they do and something that kind of separates themselves from other putter companies. So although the prices are high on these putters, I do and always have felt like they've done a great job at making sure their customers are pretty well taken care of. They've also done done a pretty nice job with the head cover as you can see built and balanced in the USA lab golf and it also has a magnet right here with some of the lab golf icons now that pretty much covers all the tech and specs on the link one so let's go ahead and get into my thoughts on the putter in terms of looks with the link one I pretty much think they nailed it now the head shape itself is very similar to your answer to style putter which is exactly what I prefer in a blade and while it probably isn't the prettiest answer to style putter I've ever seen I do think it looks about as good as they could have made it while still maintaining the reliable angle balancing technology additionally I would say that I prefer it in comparison to the Blad 1 and the B.2, their first two blades, because it's just a lot closer to the modern blade that we're used to seeing nowadays. Another thing I like is the finish. It's sort of a satin bead blast finish that offers absolutely no glare and looks very, very clean. Something I will mention that is pretty interesting about the looks of this putter is the fact that none of the logos or alignment aids are machined into the putter. Instead, they're actually laser etched onto the putter. So I can't say it's something I'm a fan of or not a fan of. It's just something that I wanted to point out. I'll be honest with you guys though, the more time I spend looking at this putter and kind of seeing these laser engravings, the more I actually like them, I really love this design in the cavity with the different sizes of Lab Golf icons. I think it looks really, really good in person. And another thing I'll point out is that the top line is actually pretty thin. So if you're looking to get a top line alignment line, it's probably going to look more like a dash than a line because it is quite narrow up here. Now, if there is one thing I would critique from a looks perspective, it would probably be the fact that the hosel is so close to the center of the face. For me personally, I found that it was getting extremely close 
close to the Eliminate in the back here, which was kind of throwing off my aim occasionally. So maybe would have appreciated if they moved this hosel a little bit closer to the heel and kind of got it out of the way of that flange line. Getting into feel now, and this is a tough area for putters because it is quite subjective. Now, it's important to note that on the Link 1, you only have the option of getting this putter with grooves, which kind of offers a softer yet solid feel and impact. But for me personally, it's not my preference in terms of feel. Now, I think that the grooves could be right for the player that prefers it, but me personally, I prefer a firmer feel, so really a smooth face or very light milling. And really what I would appreciate them doing is kind of offering some different options in the future. Like I said, this is not a bad feeling putter by any means. It's just a little bit more on the softer side with a little bit less feedback, which is not quite my preference. So hopefully they do offer some more options down the road. That being said, I think if you're somebody who really likes a softer feeling putter, you're gonna absolutely love how this feels off the face. Additionally, I went with the Acra Graphite Putter Shaft in this Link 1. And I'm sure a lot of people out there are wondering how this shaft performs, how it feels. And the way I would describe it is sort of the feel of a stepped putter shaft with the stability of something extremely stiff. Now, I'm not really sure if that makes a ton of sense, but hopefully if you're somebody who is considering the Acra putter shaft, that kind of gives you a little bit of intel on how this thing feels and performs. Moving on to sound now with the Link 1, and the way I would describe this is more on the muted side, which is really thanks in part to the grooves. Obviously, the less material that is coming into contact with the golf ball, the less sound that is gonna come off the putter face. But with that being said, there is a sort of pinginess to the putter face. Obviously not a high-pitched ping like something with a sound slot, but really a sort of low-pitched or muted sort of ping. I'm not exactly sure how to describe it. I'll put some videos up and hopefully kind of show you how it sounds. On to forgiveness now, and this is an area where the putter does perform quite well. And that's kind of the whole point behind lie angle balancing, because it's just a lot easier to keep the putter face square throughout the entirety of the stroke. So on most putts to me, it really felt like, especially with heel and toe strikes, it just wasn't as easy to twist as other blades on the market, which is obviously a huge thing because if you can get putts to start closer to their intended line or on their intended line, especially on heel and toe strikes, you're gonna make more putts. So to me, the forgiveness of this putter is definitely above other blades I've tried and a huge positive. Now, would I say it's as forgiving as the Mez 1 models or the DF 2.1? No, I wouldn't say it's quite that forgiving, but at the same time, that's kind of what you're giving up when you move into a blade. You're getting that performance and feel and look of a blade, and you're gonna give up a little bit of MOI and forgiveness but at the same time, I do think this is very decently forgiving for what it is. In terms of overall performance with the Link 1, it's quite impressive, and it's pretty much exactly what I'm used to seeing from Lab Golf. On straight putts, if you can get the putter aligned properly, it's pretty much just point and shoot inside of 10 feet. It's honestly hard to miss straight putts if you can get the putter aligned properly because it really just wants to stay dead square. Also, once I got used to the groove face, I really found a significant improvement in distance control on longer putts because I wasn't so worried about making sure the face stayed square. I could really just focus in on my lines and speed. So that pretty much covers all my thoughts on the Lab Golf Link 1. And in terms of a rating, I'm going to give it a 9.8 out of 10. Truthfully, this technology flat out works. And it's actually nice to see people in the industry that are making products to help the everyday golfer shoot lower scores and not just blowing smoke and selling them on marketing. The overall design of the putter is very well done and finally a lab golf blade I could really see a lot of people gaming because it is so close in looks to what we see on the market today. If there are a couple critiques the first thing is that I would like to see them offer a couple different face options maybe a light mill and a deep mill. I just think it would help players who prefer that sort of feel get into a lab golf putter. Additionally I would like to see them maybe move that hosel over just a little bit as I kind of felt like it got in the way of the alignment occasionally and threw off my aim a little bit. And aim kind of brings me into my next point with this putter and with this style of putter, because it is zero torque, it wants to stay square. It's very important to get this putter aligned properly. So what I would really recommend to most people who are looking at link one is making sure whichever alignment you choose properly helps your bias and aim. To do this, you may need to head into a fitting setter and work with someone to find an alignment aid that aims you on your intended line. Another thing I'll mention about these lab golf putters is something that isn't a critique, but it's something I'm hoping to see in the future is a putter with offset. Now, I don't even know if that's something that is possible to do and still maintain the lie angle balancing technology, 
But if it is, I would like to see them do it because I think it would get even more people on the lab golf train. What I will say is part of the beauty of Link 1 is the fact that it has so little onset that you can actually use your standard style putter grip. You do not need a press grip to get your hands in the right spot. So I think that is a big step forward and a really nice touch from lab golf. All that being said, I really cannot say enough good things about the Link 1 and lab golf as a company. I think lie angle balancing is easily one of the coolest technologies we've ever seen in the industry. And I I truly commend Lab for their efforts in helping golfers shoot lower scores. Guys, that's a review. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give it a like. Comment if you have any questions at all. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go ahead and click that notification bell. And also make sure you're following us on our other socials, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.